Hey guys, Glockster42 here. Well, it's getting pretty soon to hunting season here, September 15th, opening day start, so I'm going to uh, just put that rifle together. You've seen the one, uh, the Duracoder 308. So I'm going to whip up some uh, hand loads that I've uh, previously tested up. So I thought, well, I'll just do a basic um, reloading basics. So what we're doing here is we're loading 308. I'm using um, brand new Remington uh, 308 Winchester unprimed cases. Now I don't know about you guys, but whenever I get Remington versus Winchester, they say 50. I usually get 51, 52. I've even had as many as 54 um, cases in a bag. It's always one or two extra, always, and I don't know why. It's uh, it's just uh, just one of those things. So what we're going to be doing up is we're going to be getting uh, brand new cases prepped and ready to go uh, for reloading. Now it's just a little bit different than say we're using a um, a brand new uh, a brand new um, case. So we're going to use these brand spanking new Remingtons and we're going to get them loaded up and ready to go. I'm just pulling out some of the other ones that don't match different case heads. So here we've got a brand spanking new Remington never been fired, never been loaded, nice and clean. Now if you notice the the um, mouth of these, they're a little rough and they're not perfectly symmetrical. So what I like to do is I take them unlubed in the resizing die, just run them up, just work them in there a little bit. Now what that does is that it makes the uh, case mouth concentric and it makes it nice and round. And then after that I always clean it up and give it a little bit of a inside chamfer and a little bit of an outside so you just clean it up get it ready to go and you'll want to do that with every one of your brand new cases you just don't want to take a brand new case and go out and start priming them and dumping powder in them now this old RCBS I bought at a garage sale for fifteen dollars and uh, I always used to use a Lyman but I like this RCBS rock shucker a whole bunch better so that's just a simple, that's what you want to do for all your cases to get them ready. Now see this one here? It's got a bit of a dent to it. Nothing wrong with the case. It's just that if you try to see the bolt there, well, just not a good thing. So we'll just pop her through there. Don't try and resize the whole thing. You just want to clean the mouths up a bit. So you can see there, nice and concentric, but it's still pretty rough. So just give her a clean up like that. And like that. So let's get the rest of these done. Okay, so once we've got all the case models uh, ready to roll, next thing we need to do is prime these puppies. Now I'm going to be using Federal Gold Metal uh, Match GM210M large rifle primers. Um, two reasons I'm using them. I've got about 6,000 of them put away and they just make it that much more accurate in this 308. Uh, just what I grabbed when I was making up the loads and boy they work really well. And to prime them, I'm going to be using my new Lee, this is the XR primer. I've done a review on it in the past. Now, uh, they say that this is the only Lee hand primer that you're supposed to use the federal primers in. Well, yeah, I've been using Lee primers, hand primers for about 20 years now. And I've probably gone through about 15,000 federal primers with without a single problem. But... I guess there's always that first time. So I'm just going to pull 20, 20 out of here. There we are. There's the 20. I'm actually going to load up 21 of these. I'll just give them a shake. They all get pulled over fairly quickly. It's a darn good system. You just pop it in. Now, there we are. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen how these work. They work pretty good. So a half a step to pop the primer in, drop it back down, set it, boom, set your primer, all right, let's get my, all right now, let's get some more priming going on, that one's just a little sticky, I've got to admit I like the old style, the old round ones better, they just seem to seed in a little bit better, had a little bit better feeling for me, so anyway, we'll get these 20 primed up and then we'll uh, get the powder charges ready. All right, for this uh, 308s, we're going to be using a 180 grain bullet. In this case, we're using Barnes 180 grain uh, 
TSX triple shocks. They're a solid bullet design. Uh, two reasons I use these. First and foremost is that that rifle simply loves a 180 grain bullet. That's three shots, uh, 100 yards with 41 and a half grains of Varget powder. So it really, really likes the that 180 grain bullet. So, and the second reason I'm using 180 grain bullet, where I hunt, I could see white-tail deer, mule deer, elk, moose, black bear, grizzly bear, grizzlies, um, sasquatch, um, you name it. Uh, I've been put the run on by an angry cow moose a few <laughs> once or twice, more than a, more than once. I've been charged by a black bear once uh, many years ago. And here just last year I was out where there shouldn't be any grizzly bear and there was a grizzly bear not more than two kilometers from my uh, tent. So that's why I use a 180 grain bullet. Uh, the triple shock, um, you know, the TSX bullet penetrates deep. It's a really good quality uh, super bullet. Um, I tend to be a bit of a bullet snob. I use premium bullets. Triple shocks, uh, tip triple shocks. This is another load that I like to use in my 308. This is a 150 grain tip triple shock. Uh, it's a superb deer cartridge, black bear, just fantastic. Uh, I'll probably end up using this one this year just for something a little bit different. Every uh, game animal I've ever taken has been taken with either a uh, Nostler partition, a Barnes uh, tipped, a uh, Barnes, the old style Barnes, this style Barnes. Uh, Nostler Acubons and Nostler Partition, so I, I'm a bit of a bullet snob, so we'll get the uh, powder uh, measure figured out, and then we'll uh, dump some powder. Alright guys, whenever I'm uh, reloading hunting ammunition or any precision ammunition, I always do single throw charges, so the very first thing you want to do is zero out your scale. In this case, it's an old RCABS that I've had for probably 30 years. Uh, picked up a couple of them extra. So the first thing you want to do is zero out your scale, which I've done there. Usually it's just an adjustment screw on there. You just want to make sure the liner's pointed up perfectly in line. All right, we zeroed it out. All right, now we want to get some powder ready. All right, when I uh, do the precision stuff, I use a powder throw, in this case uh, a lime and another almost antique powder throw that I've had for Oh gosh, I've lost track. And I also use um, one of these RCBS powder trickles. You uh, you almost need one. Basically, you pour the powder into the top, and then you just trickle it out into the uh, into the pan to zero it out. Now, in this case, we are going to set it up for 41 and a half grains. Now, this gun this shoots really well in my gun. It may not shoot well in yours. In fact. It may be overpressured in yours, or it may give really bad accuracy. Every gun is its own, its own. So what works in mine does may not work in yours. So don't take anything that I say volume-wise to heart. Go do it yourself. Check it out. Work your loads up a grain or half, a uh, grain or half grain at a time. I usually load. Uh, I've always found that the the higher end. Uh, Loads generally tend to be a little bit more accurate. So with the powder dump, it's just a matter of popping it down, dropping the powder in, you're ready to roll, then you pop it over here, well, over wherever you want, and then you top it off with your powder trickle. Just to trickle it in. I found that this makes the, for me, is the best way. It's a little more time consuming than uh, trying to get it, uh, dumping all your powder in. But once it's set up, you just go through the motions with everyone. I'm only loading up 20, so we'll get these loaded up, get these uh, cases charged, and then we'll do some uh, bullet seating. All right, I've only got two, four, six cases here. Um, ready to roll but it's all the same so you just want to get your uh, case in the shell holder hold the bullet with your right hand get it up in there now just hold it up and follow it up boom 
there's one elk killer, one mule deer killer, one whitetail, black bear, whatever you want to go hunting with it. That's just that simple. Now, uh, using once fired cases is a little bit more to it. Just a couple more steps. Uh, we'll save that for another day. But right now, reloading uh, brand new factory cases, it's just that simple. I know some guys will uh, go ahead and run these right up, just up until uh, do a light, light shoulder bump in the sizing die, but I've never found that to be necessary. A lot of guys will say for uh, hunting loads you should always use once fired cases just to prove your uh, prove your case so it doesn't fail on you. And I guess there's a first time for everything but in uh, 30 years of reloading I've never had a brand new factory case fail on me. Other than maybe some very old mill spec cases. So there you have it guys. A real quick and easy how to for reloading, uh, basic, reloading basics. Uh, reloading from uh, brand new factory cases. It's uh, pretty darn simple and it's something that uh, anybody and everybody who is a uh, firearms guy or uh, is interested in shooting you really should be reloading. Not only can you uh, tailor your case for exactly what you want it to shoot, you can also um, save some money. You're not going to save a whole lot with the price of bullets and powder and primers these days but it sure gives you a good sense of accomplishment you know crafting up 20, 30, 40, 50 uh, accurate ha uh, hunting loads for your rifle. Alright guys, once again, Glockster42, I really appreciate you guys watching and taking your time to check out my channel. So uh, we've got a few things coming. In fact, uh, my next video I'm going to give you a, show, show you a few of my um, uh, Alberta deer that I've taken throughout the years. You know, not that many, just three or four good ones, a couple of really nice ones, and a couple of very interesting sheds I found. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Later. Take care.